Do you know what comic books could use? A strong female lead. That's what we need to save the comic book industry at this point. <laughs> I've been reporting over the last few years just about how everything's been destructing, self-destructing, really, in this industry, all because of DEI and ESG requirements that are just putting a stranglehold on Marvel and DC Comics. Uh, you go down the rest of the line, and it's pretty much the same thing. Uh, and there's no differences between the companies at this point. Everybody in the mainstream industry is exactly the same. They're pushing out the same woke agenda uh, in comic book form, pretending that it's an actual storyline when it's really about something else. They've got Tom King, you know, I mean, got Wonder Woman on the screen here, a CIA asset literally just putting in weird psyop crap into his Wonder Woman uh, but no, they're they're just failing their female characters and creators. My gosh, it's ridiculous at this point. You've got Heather Antos in charge of the Star Trek line, which has been a just absolute disaster. I'm one of the few uh, comic channels that actually reviews those comics and one of the few people in the world that actually read them. Uh, and it's just uh, it's just a terrible, terrible fanfic. Uh, just uh, you could tell they don't even care about Star Trek over there. It's not any much different with the Marvel and DC creators. I I, I showed the uh, the other day uh, about this uh, Kitty Pride and the exceptional X Men. Look at look at this. There's they're they're exceptional, I guess. Well, that isn't exceptional like a, a word for retarded? Uh, isn't isn't that? <laughs> anyway, that's kind of what it looks like here. We got a, a weird looking Emma Frost. We got Kitty Pride. We got we got the the weird black lady in the back. We we got a they them green person. And uh, I'm going to guess that's a transgender up top there, too. Uh, so, uh, you know, I mean, uh, I, maybe it's failing, uh, but it's probably because the content's so bad, uh, really, at the end of the day. And that we're going to go over the CBR article, which uh, which their Priest Parker, that's uh, probably a uh, AI bot writing this for real. <laughs> but uh, that's what they're being replaced with. Now, over here, we have a real female character, Ayla Rin. Uh, who's saving humanity from an AI virus. Uh, it's, it's very poignant for right now. You will absolutely enjoy this book. And by the way, the artist is female also. Uh, one thing CBR will never do is mention this book. Uh, never will mention uh, the product here. Never will talk about it. Never will acknowledge its existence. And it's all because uh, it's just about political agenda over there. It's not about actual comic books. We are about actual comics over here. We produce them. This link to my web store is in the description below. Grab this today. I'm going to be launching book two very, very soon. Uh, and you're going to love this. Uh, it is uh, some of the best comics uh, made in the last decade. Uh, very proud of our work here and very proud of the universe we're building, which is way better than anything Marvel and DC has going on at the moment. So uh, comic books are always have been a male-dominated industry. Oh, no. Uh, kind of true, kind of not. Uh, while most men were creators back in the 40s and 50s, actually some of the biggest comics were romance comics and Archie comics and things like that, slice-of-life things. And a lot of women bought those. Uh, you had Millie the Model from Marvel. Uh, the, these were things designed to appeal towards women, and uh, they did. And so you had your your men comics, which is the superhero beat em up stuff. Chicks don't really like that so much. And then you had your uh, your uh, love romance comics, which were which were geared towards women, and they're fantastic, by the way. I recommend reading them. Uh, I have the Kirby romances uh, right here sitting beside me, and they're some of the best comic books ever created. Now, when the comic books first emerged in the early 20th century, they catered to girls and boys. That's right, uh, and 90% of kids were reading them. Uh, that's maybe the problem is they're not catering towards kids anymore. They're really catering towards mentally ill adults, uh, and that's what we got from all of this. Uh, and so by the 60s, uh, it had become heavily skewed towards men because they dropped everything but superhero comics. That's the genre, again, not really the industry so much. Gender equality has grown in every other industry, but comic books are lagging behind. Oh, no, for women of color, people who identify as non-binary. You know, this is like all like five of them in San Francisco. <laughs> I mean, like, who cares? Representation is even worse. I, I, you know, that's not true because if you open any DC comic, they're, they're lecturing you about pronouns and homosexuality. Uh, so uh, I'm not sure uh, what, what books they're reading at this point, but uh, geez. The world's population is approximately half male and half female. Wow, this is brilliant writing. Uh, no gender has an inherent advantage of writing or creative visual art. Yeah, well, you are taking a thing that's designed again for boys, which is a beat em up action adventure thing, uh, and saying girls need to be here too. Uh, you never do this with your romance genres or anything like that. You don't say, oh, these romance books, uh, we need more men involved in this. I've never heard the woman say this in my entire life. Uh, I did write a romance novel. Yeah, <laughs> I took a female pen name to do it uh, because the, it's so skewed over there. You cannot 
uh, exist in those spaces as a, as a man. It doesn't work. Um, and so uh, that's how you have to sell things over there. You have to pretend. Uh, so it's quite uh, the gender inequality over there. But for some reason, they don't care about that. Why did they never mention this? It's always the boys' things that need to be invaded by women and then get ruined as a consequence. And that's what's happening with Marvel Comics. I mean, you see this whole deal. Every comic now just has like some sort of female counterpart. Every comic has some sort of black counterpart or gay counterpart or whatever. Even Daredevil, like now they're ra- launching two Daredevil books, and one of them has Elektra dressed as Daredevil because they have to have a she Daredevil. I mean, it's ridiculous. Uh, and people, and they don't even call it she Daredevil anymore. They don't differ. They just call it Daredevil. You you get in X Men uh, X twenty three, who's a, a female clone Wolverine person. Uh, calling herself Wolverine, and you have Logan lecturing the reader, going, "She's just as much Wolverine as I am." In the book, just to like, uh, just to like hammer these points home, it's re- it's terrible. It's not even fun to read. It it they read like lectures, and that's maybe the problem here. Allowing readers to imagine themselves in the world of the story. So I guess readers are so dumb and so unimaginative at this point, they can't imagine themselves unless they look exactly like them. So we should make sure every single superhero is like an obese. Um, neckbeard at this point uh really to capture the market here right i mean that's how it would work but oh well that's not what they're saying at all uh and so the numbers are going bad and they're saying that the badness is because of gender equality it's because of the wokeness it's quite the opposite the more that they push these products that nobody wants the stuff that nobody wants to read the more that nobody's reading these books it's pretty obvious at this juncture but they are completely ignoring it Marvel places most of its women on teams. Well, that's because of this, my friends. Uh, You've got Scarlet Witch with her own book, and you had Steve Orlando, the guy who's writing the Scarlet Witch, even as it has a TV series out of Scarlet Witch, so she's in the public zeitgeist, the book was not selling very well. The book was just a complete train wreck, and he had to cancel it and reboot it with an all-new number one to try to go to those collectors in who aren't even reading. Uh, into uh, backing this book uh, that, that, of course, nobody wants. And it's because they're not writing a story that people want. Uh, that's what it is. Now, She-Hulk used to be good under John Byrne. If you look at the recent iterations, they're terrible. Uh, I mean, that's what it is every single time. Uh, if you look at what they did with Captain Marvel, it's terrible. Uh, so every single female uh, lead book, they just put terrible creatives on, really, is, is what I'm seeing. You can't get anything like back in the day. You remember Peter David's Supergirl? That was the best Supergirl run ever. Uh, and it lasted 75, 80 issues. You remember Spider-Girl, the MC2? It was even an alternate universe. And that, that book lasted over 100 issues uh, with Tom DeFalco writing because they had real talent on there. It didn't have to do with team books or whatever. Just having just the name on the title doesn't do anything. It's ridiculous. And so, um, you know, this is what they want. They want the industry to, to lean more into this stuff to lean more into the identity stuff, the ESG, the DEI, uh, the, the the crap that makes all of you sick when you when you want to open up these books, and they want you a- away from stuff like Ultimate Spider-Man, where you know, I mean, they kind of give the readers what they want, right? With the Jonathan Hickman uh, uh, having Mary Jane and Peter together, that's that's what they want. They want Superman and Lois together. They even want Batman and Catwoman together. Jesus, uh, but uh, it has to be something that's all like some weird Amazonian anti-male thing uh, for them to be happy and at that point nobody reads we've seen it every single time they try it the sales collapse even worse and it's because it's just not fun gosh so they've got all these stats which are ridiculous Uh, (laughs) this is dc comics team or anthology titles comics with male leads 27 comics with female leads seven i i don't think if you add to that i mean do do you really think that like batgirl's selling well uh, I don't even know if it's still a title at this point. Catwoman is it, with Tina, T, uh, Tini Howard. Is is that selling well? Doubt it. We have, probably when it was crossing over with Chip Zdarsky's Batman, it was. Uh, my gosh. Uh, we know that uh, Supergirl got canceled due to its sales and because there are problems there. So let's add more uh, things that don't sell. It's insane. It's insane they have this many as it is. You should ax probably half of them at this point if you want to actually have a comic industry that's thriving. But it's not about those characters. I mean, this is my bestseller. It has a female lead, even though, you know, my, my audience leans towards wanting male leads more. Uh, this book just went off the charts, and it's just because of the quality of the content. It's not because of what is in the book uh, in terms of, like, checking off identity boxes. That's where they're never going to learn. Now, CBR writes these articles, at least, or at least has AI write these articles, in order to just get some clicks uh, because they know that, like, their regular content, if they just 
reported on whatever is going on with the new Wonder Woman book wouldn't get any clicks. And that's the problem with the comic industry. Nobody cares anymore. They've sacrificed everything in the name of identity politics, and everybody has tuned out. All right, leave a comment down below with what you think about this. Hit the like and subscribe button. Make sure to grab my book. Uh, that's on my web store in the description below. Whether you like uh, anything, uh, you will enjoy this comic. I guarantee it. I'll see you soon.